Welcome back. Today I'm at Lake Eden, and I'd really like to thank everybody who watches my videos and who comments on my videos. And today's video is because I've recently gotten a few comments about a specific focusing mode on the Z6 II, which I'd stopped using, but it got me thinking, should I try it once again? And that is focus tracking. Because if you roll the Z6 II, focus tracking on a cat or a dog or a person, very easy to do. But on birds, the Z6 II does not have focus tracking for birds. And I've had a few people say, well, I've tried it and it works. So I'm at Lake Eden today and I'm going to try this. My YouTube mode, this is my wildlife photography mode, both for photos and for video. I've recently modified the U1 mode just for focus tracking. And I'm really going to give it the best shot today. The reason I modified the U1 mode because I didn't want to modify my U2 modes. So I could easily go from U1 to U2. Now you have to remember that on the Z6 II, only three modes work with focus tracking. Auto focus for the whole frame, auto focus for people, or auto focus for animals, dogs and cats. So I've just set up in a general auto focus. It's not animals or a lot of people. It doesn't recognize birds, so I will do everything manually. So let's start walking, and I'll start by just showing you a brief area of Lake Eden. And I'm going to walk with the sun, so the sun will be on my back for most of the walk around the lake, which is around a 1.4 kilometer walk. So this is Lake Eden, only about a 10 minute drive away from my place. There are a few birds around. We'll start off by photographing the water birds, and then move around into the scrubby area to see what other types of birds are around. I can see we've got the Australasian grebes, we've got some Pacific black ducks, we've got some coots, some moorhens, and we've got a black swan way on the other side there. So let's start walking. So all these photos were taken in Auto Area AF, and you can see there's a couple of red squares here, and this is how Auto Area AF works on bird. You can see it's just not locking on to anything. This is why I only use it with subject tracking. Once I turn subject tracking on, this is what I get. A square white box with four arrows, which using the dial at the back, I can move all around my screen. Once I press the back button, focus button on, this is what I get, a yellow box. This shows me that it's locked onto my subject, and now I can start tracking my subject all across the frame. But you won't see this box. All you will see is this red square box. It just looks like a normal focusing mode. But to give you an idea of how big this area is compared to the other three modes that I use, this is single point. You can see how small it is. And this is my preferred autofocus point when it is a bird in the tree or it is a dark area where I'm finding hard to focus. This is dynamic area AF. The center square is the same size as single point, but now we have eight red squares around it to help lock on to your focus. And this is the only other mode that I use, which is wide area small, which is much bigger than subject tracking. And this is why I only use wide area small for birds in flight. So this is the first bird that I photographed with subject tracking. It was a hard head. It wasn't moving, so I was just moving the camera a little bit just to get a feel of how subject tracking worked because I hadn't used it in a long time. It had no problem at all keeping focus, but remember that the bird wasn't moving. It's just me moving the camera. The next bird I photographed was a dusky moorhen, and it was slowly coming towards me. I locked onto the bird and I tracked it as it came towards me. And I did it on purpose that I just let the bird go out of the frame. I didn't track the bird. I just let it go out of the frame to see how good subject tracking was at tracking the bird as it left the frame. So this is the same dusty moorhen that I was photographed and I just caught it had it was jumping out of the water onto the little pavement beside the lake. The camera locked on and I was very surprised this was the first action shot that I got of the camera tracking a bird as it was moving. I was quite pleased to see that these photos were all in focus. The next bird I photographed was this Pacific black duck. It was about 20 meters away, just slowly coming towards me. Again, subject tracking worked very well. Mind you, the 
Pacific black duck wasn't moving that quickly, but just slowly coming towards me. So this is an Australasian grebe, one of the smallest water birds that we have in Australia. You can see how big the square is compared to the bird. And once I locked on, it had no problem locking onto the bird, even when it dived under the water. And it stayed locked on to the little wake that the bird left. And I was very impressed by this. Now I'd seen this black cormorant, but it was just under the bridge. And by the time I noticed it and activated subject tracking, it was already in flight. Because it's black, it locked on to the area of the black area. So I'm very happy that, but I'm pleased that it still did a reasonable job. I'd say 80%. Had I been able to catch the bird before it took flight, I'm pretty sure I would have had more success in tracking this black cumra. So I've been here for just over an hour. Walked around halfway across the lake. I started with water birds and I had some fairly good success. Some hit and miss, but also wanted some land-based birds. Lorikeets, wrens, and this place is normally full of fairy wrens. Today, haven't found one fairy wren. Land-based birds have been hard to find. This rainbow lorikeet feeding on some blossoms and you can see that there's leaves and all that, but the camera still focused on the bird very well. Even though the bird wasn't moving much, I pan away from it to see if it will actually keep tracking the bird. And again, it locked onto the bird perfectly. Now this little water bird was feeding some blossoms. In this situation here, I would normally be using single point because the bird is backlit and the camera normally struggles. But here, with subject tracking, it did a very good job. Now, I don't know whether it locked on to the blossom flower or onto the bird because they're both in the same plane, but at the end here, you can see that it lost the bird. So I'm pretty sure that it just locked on to the flower. Now, this was the first big test for subject tracking because this olive back oriole was quite high up in the tree. And the reason it looks like it's blurred is because there was some shrubs in front of it. So it looks blurred, but it saw through the small leaves and locked onto this olive-backed oriole. I was very surprised that it did that. The oriole took flight, moved to another tree. I had this branch right in front of it, but at the start, it locked on to the bird. But about halfway through the series of shots, the camera lost focus on the bird and locked on to this branch in front. And from here on in, all the photos of the oriole were out of focus. This was the last bird that I photographed before my break, a masked lapwing, or commonly called a plover. And here it's just walking away from the camera, and I'm not moving the camera, this bird is just walking away from the, the camera, and the subject tracking track this bird all the way out of the frame. One thing that I have found in both when I photograph land-based birds and water birds is that my focusing point is quite large. And when I was trying to photograph a couple of birds in the tree, there was a fig bird that I was trying to photograph. It was having a hard time locking on because it's such a big square and the bird was in branches and all that. Like I've stated in previous videos, I've had to use the focusing ring just to get it in focus. And once it was in focus, it worked out very well. And I found that when I was tracking water birds, it did a very good job. But trying to photograph a bird that is standing still or just feeding, like I just took a photo of an egret, it was not feeding, but it wasn't moving much. So what I decided to do is just move the camera. So instead of just holding the camera still, photographing the egret, I was just panning around, inducing movement to see if the camera would stay locked on. And it did a very good job. Now, when I shoot wildlife, I normally get around 19 frames before the buffer runs out on the SD card. That's normally heaps for me. But today, trying to get focus tracking and all, trying to see how many times the camera can actually stay locked on when I'm moving the camera. 19 frames doesn't seem that much when I'm using continuous high extended, which gives me eight and a half to nine frames a second. So just over two seconds and that's it. The buffer runs out. Will I be using it in the future? Well, it depends on the circumstances, but I'm very surprised and I'm glad that I've decided to give it another go. Will it be my default setting? No, I'm still very happy with the settings that I have. 
but it still gives me an option that when birds are in the open, I will look at using focus tracking more. This is something that I always state that if I feel that I should give something another go, I will. And this is why I appreciate people commenting. And sometimes people give me advice and I'm always open advice because if you're not open advice, you become stale. You're just stuck in your ways and I don't believe this is the best way for photography. So thank you for the advice. So by now I had enough photos for my experiment on subject tracking and I was quite happy, but I couldn't pass up the chance of photographing this common Maya bird just hunting for small worms and insects in the grass. I have a big X mark. This is the first photo and it just took a couple of seconds for subject tracking to lock onto it as it was slowly walking towards me. And out of the 20 photos I took, four were out of focus. And you can see it's just walking towards me. They're a beautiful bird, but they don't belong in Australia. And you can see here, all these are all in focus. Then these two are out of focus. And this is how quick it happens when you're shooting at eight and a half frames a second. So I wasn't too happy with the first set because four photos were out of focus. So I decided to have another go at subject tracking this common Maya bird. And at the start, it focused on the bird quite well. And all of a sudden for four frames, it went out of focus, but then grabbed focus again and the rest were all in focus. So that's it for me. It's 11 o'clock. I've done all the testing that I needed to do. And I'd say 80% of the time, focus tracking worked. Like I stated earlier, the main problem is that you can't select a smaller focusing area. If a bird is in the tree and there's shrubbery around it, it will find hard to focus and you might have to use the focusing ring or you just have to accept that you're not going to get those shots. The one time that subject tracking really let me down, I was photographing some magpie geese. I could hear magpie geese coming, they were calling quickly looked up in the sky and I saw a huge flock of magpie geese coming in. They weren't flapping, they were just cruising down, just like a plane when they're landing. They were just coming in plan. I tried to use subject tracking and the camera had a hard time focusing. It really didn't track any birds. This is the pitfall. Maybe I should have just let subject tracking off and just shot in auto and it would have picked up the birds moving around in the sky. But that's a big maybe, I don't know. So that's the only time really that I can say negative subject tracking didn't work. So if you've got any comments or feedback about subject tracking, leave it in the comments. I answer all questions and I'm glad that some people give me some ideas on, you know, maybe I should try something again. So if you like it, give it a big thumbs up, stay safe, enjoy wildlife photography. I'll see you next time.